Okay, so here's a little tutorial on uh, identifying and possibly fixing an issue that you might have with the uh, Roland Juno 106 programmable polyphonic synthesizer. Uh, so the problem lies in the 817A voice chips uh, that Roland installed and uh, they dipped them in plastic and apparently that's causing issues. So what we need to do is we need to get the, the plastic off. Now there's six chips on the module board so we need to identify which chip is giving us the problem. So uh, what you want to do is you want to turn on the Juno while holding key transpose. Now I've already entered that mode because I'm holding a camera and it's hard to do two things uh, when you only have two hands. Uh, so we've done that and then you want to uh, make sure that poly 1 and 2 are lighted and now when you hit a key you'll you'll notice this tells me what voice chip is playing and uh, guess which one has the problem yep number two now I'm gonna let you in, in on a little secret number two is having a problem because I've actually removed it from the module board uh, I didn't think to make this video until after I had done that so uh, it's kind of obvious that number two is having a problem because it's not there. So the next thing you want to do then is, uh, of course, you want to unplug it, and you take off the screws on the side of the uh, the side of the side of the case over here. Let me point the camera at what I'm pointing at. Um, pop the device open, and there you have the the guts of the Juno 106 poly polyphonic programmable synthesizer. Or maybe I said that wrong. All right, so here's here is the module board that you're going to want to take out, and you'll notice, as I said earlier, uh, number two chip is actually missing. Um, now that the six chips are here, and uh, let me kind of go this way so you can see them. So this is one where two is supposed to be, three, four, five, and six. Now you'll notice number five already has the plastic removed. That was the first uh, voice chip that I had in this synth that started getting all wonky. So I've already done this process to that one and it, it actually worked beautifully. It was fairly easy to do. You take the chip out and uh, throw it in the acetone and peel the, ac peel the plastic off and uh, throw it back in there and everybody's happy um, except for when number two goes bad. So the board is held in with uh, I think there's six screws in all. Uh, two here, two here, and two over here. Uh, don't really worry too much about the cables coming out. They they all uh, are sort of different sizes and uh, live in different parts of the the module board. But uh, if if you have a problem remembering where things go, then uh, maybe make a note, put a tape on them or something, um, and uh, unplug them, unscrew the thing, and pull it out. So we have our voice chip is out. Now what I've done is you can kind of see if I hold it just right. You can see I've put some scratches in it. Um, on this side of the chip, there's no electronics on this side. You can see they're all on they're all on the other side. You can see little, little bumps and crazy things. So this side, I just run a run a razor down it and just uh, score it slightly, and that will help the acetone to get underneath the chip, and it'll it'll bubble up quicker than if you don't. Right. So then you get a uh, you get a jug, a uh, little bowl or something. Uh, throw some acetone in it. You can see there's some residue from my previous chip, and just that's it. Drop it in there, seal it up, and uh, let it soak for. About 12 hours, uh, it'll start to, to soften up, and um, then you can start kind of chipping away at it, and we'll be back for that. Okay, so here's the uh, IC chip after it's been sitting in acetone for about um, eight hours, and you can see that some of the plastic has gotten soft, and I've, I've managed to pick away at it. Uh, I would show you me picking away at it on camera, but that's kind of boring, so I'll just tell you about it. Um, uh, as you can see, I've, I've managed to get it out from in between the IC prongs over here. This one, on the other hand, got a little goopy, and so it's going to take a little bit of extra picking away at it. But, you know, it's like a scab or something. It's fun to pick at. 
Okay, so there's the chip all cleaned and nice and pretty. There's a little bit of gook in there. I guess I still need to uh, clean out, but uh, now it's time to throw this back in the module and see if this fixed the problem. All right, here you go. A little soldering action shot, just to, so you guys don't feel left out. All the interesting, uh, smoky, nasty elements of electronics. Fill those guys up right there. I can dream of you in my telescopes late tonight. I'll put something on the screen that makes this interesting. And there you go. Soldered back in. Okay, so the module is back in the synth, uh, and uh, there's the chip I replaced right there. And uh, so now all we have to do is uh, just plug all these little guys back in. Here's some more action shots for you, you know, because they're so important. Here we go. Here's another action shot plugging in. Ta da! Alright, so let's test it and see if it works. Okay, so the board is back into the uh, synth. It's all hooked up. It's all ready to go. I've e entered into test mode again, as you can tell by the wonky display. Um, and as you recall earlier, I showed you how to enter test mode. Uh, I'm not going to show you that again. So let's go ahead and test uh, this and see how the voice chip sound. <laughs> Yep, they're all there. Well, you know, they all ring when they're all in the board. <laughs> um, okay, so you can mess around with some different settings just to make sure that they all ring the same. And uh, if they don't, there's there's actually some uh, calibration you can do on the board itself. There's some uh, little variable resistors on there. And uh, online, if you dig around on Google, you can find a worksheet on how to calibrate those. Uh, in this case, on both of the both of the chips that, that I restored, um, they didn't seem to need any recalibration. I just popped them back in and, and off they went. So there we go. I'm good at keyboards. 